Hey everybody, I'm back here at our Dufferin project for another update. I'm standing on the third floor, which the last time we were here, this floor didn't exist. So I'm gonna walk you around, show you everything that's changed since we've last been here and what's gonna happen over the next couple of months as we move forward on this project. Welcome to part two of my Dufferin project update. If you haven't checked out part one, I'll leave a link for it right here and you can watch that to see where we were to where we are right now. One of the major changes that's happened since we were last here is that the building is all completely framed up now and the roof is on, meaning the framing for the roof is on and also the roofing material is on, which means we're watertight from above, which is a great thing when you're working, especially when you've got all the trade contractors that wanna come in now. Now they don't have to worry about getting their equipment wet or any of the material wet because the roof is in place and we're watertight from above. This roof's a little bit different than most roofs you'd commonly see on a house. Most common houses have a slope roof. This is a flat roof, which means that they had to design it in a way that all of the water kind of flows to a bunch of different areas. There's four scuppers on this roof, which means that there's four points that the water exits and they all exit on the south side of this property. So it was a bit of a challenge for the framing contractor to get all the slope moving in the right direction so that all the water runs to the right place and eventually runs off and into the gutters and into the sewer system. One thing you wanna do when it comes to roofing is make sure that all of your penetrations through the roof are completed prior to the roof going on. What happens is if you cut in these penetrations after the fact, you'll often void your warranty for your roof. The HVAC contractor and the plumbing contractor came to site and marked out where their pipes were gonna go through the ceiling. Then we drilled those holes through the plywood, installed their pipes, and then the roofing contractor came in and laid out all of their roofing in one shot. That way, the roof is warrantied because they've laid it all at one time instead of cutting those holes in after the fact. The other major change that's happened since we were last here is that the sliding doors and the big windows are in at the front of the property and at the back of the property. The only thing to bring this building to lockup stage is a few remaining windows and then all of the windows and doors will be in and we can lock this building up and start storing things here overnight. Now one of the challenges with having your windows in this early is that the trade contractors still need to be bringing material and they're gonna be coming in and out to work on the property. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna barricade off the brand new windows so that these trade contractors are forced to use the side door and that way they don't damage any of the brand new windows. One of the things that I love to do on all of our purpose-built rentals is these one-piece tubs. And these essentially save us so much time and money. The challenge with them is that you have to bring them in early in your construction process. Because of the size of them, they're really hard to bring in after everything is framed up. So you need to get them on site prior to the framing contractor being here, or at least when they're here. That way they can frame the actual tub into the room instead of trying to fit it in after the fact. The reason why I love these so much is it's one piece, there's no seams, they don't leak, they look good for a long time, they're white, they're acrylic, and they're only about $1,000, and then you don't have to have any tile work or anything else done, the plumber hooks them up and they're ready to go. Now that our rough-in framing is done, we can start all of our rough-ins for plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. So as you can see behind me, the plumbers have started roughing in for all of their drain and waste lines. After this, they'll rough in all their water lines and essentially then the plumbing is complete. The next step after that will be that our electricians will come in, our HVAC contractors will come in and hook up all the furnaces and all of the ERVs or the energy recovery ventilators. Now, one of the changes that I made on the site here was I changed the layout of this unit. And this is something that you wanna pay attention to as an owner and as a developer. This wall got pushed out about 16 inches, which meant that this area was now going to be bigger. This was originally supposed to be the bedroom in this unit, but because it was much larger now, we decided to change the layout of this unit, making this the living room and kitchen. So on this wall here, we're gonna make this a linear kitchen, and then we were able to add a den to this unit. So it was a one bedroom unit before, now it's a one bedroom plus a den. That gives me more revenue and makes this building more valuable. So this is why as a developer, you need to be here on a regular basis so you can make small little adjustments to improve the revenue and eventually make your building that much more valuable. This is a typical unit in this building. It's two bedroom, one bathroom. And as you can see, we're now finished the interior framing on these units. So where I'm standing is the living room 
and behind me will be the kitchen. Right here is going to be the master bedroom. Now, right now there's no closet roughed into this bedroom because I don't like to do closets with framing. I like to do closets with millwork, meaning that I'm gonna install a closet after the fact in this room. Right next to the bedroom is the bathroom. Now, the thing that I like about this bathroom is we're gonna have a nice big vanity. So we have the tub, we've got the toilet right here, and this should allow us a four foot vanity here, which is a nice size for a two bedroom, one bathroom unit. Down the hall, we've got the secondary bedroom. And one of the things that I really love about these secondary bedrooms is that they're large enough that you can actually make it a second bedroom. Two individuals could share this apartment. In the city of Toronto, when rents are getting so expensive, it's really important to make this bedroom an actual second bedroom. I see so many apartments that have a large one bedroom and a small second bedroom, and that really limits the amount of people that wanna rent those units, because unless it's a couple that needs a secondary space for an office, they don't wanna rent an apartment like this. But if it's two usable bedrooms, you can get two people that'll share one space, and it's much more affordable from the rent perspective. The next step in the process is to get this building tied up from the outside. We are in Canada and the winter is coming, so we wanna make sure we can get all the exterior finishes done and then move inside the building when the weather gets colder. Make sure to check back on my channel regularly as we provide updates for this building and all of our other development projects that we have going on. If you're interested in learning how to be a developer, you can always check out my website at darrenvoros.com for all of my course details. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.